we are happy to receive you uh, here at the Press Club Europe. We will do a short presentation, but you can ask questions in French, Dutch, English, and we will translate for you after. We are, uh, it's a pleasure to have uh, Pascal Smet, uh, State Secretary of the Brussels Capital Region. And uh, now it's over to you, Pascal. Thank you. Yeah, good morning. Um, yeah, it's a pleasure for me to uh, to be here. Uh, first of all, um, a pleasure to be sitting next to you, to Elma, uh, because I think it's um, important that you are in Brussels based and um, you know that Brussels is the capital of many things. Um, uh, Belgium, of course, uh, all our um, not regions, but communities in Belgium, but also of NATO, of the European Union, and of course, we are most proud of the European Union. And so I think it's pretty logical that uh, you are Brussels based and we are very happy to uh, be able to host you here in this uh, wonderful uh, city. So that's the first thing I wanted to say that you had made a good choice, uh, uh, although we aided you, you a little bit, but it's a, it's a good choice to, uh, to choose uh, for Brussels. Secondly, I would like to say that um, since uh, three years, I think now, nearly three years, the Brussels capital region has um, included uh, the LGTB issue in all uh, her uh, foreign missions. You know that um, we are, as Brussels, a very open-minded city. We are a city where people can be dear people to be themselves. I think that's very important as an attitude, uh, because finally Brussels kind of attitude and that people can be who they uh, who they are, and especially also when they choose someone of the same um, gender to uh, to love. And so we are a very uh, open city, but um, we have a lot of bilateral agreements with other cities. We participate in all economic uh, missions of the Kingdom of Belgium, our own missions. Um, and what we now systematically do is include um, in all the missions an LGTBQE, um, I don't like that word, it's too complicated to pronounce. Uh, I think it's a big challenge to find a new word that uh, everybody can remember, um, to include uh, that in our missions. And uh, we did that. Um, uh, I was together with the Minister President because I'm doing foreign relations and European international foreign trade of the Brussels Capital Region. When we were, for instance, in Warsaw, um, we included it in, in, in the program. We did the same in Istanbul. We did the same in Ankara, which are a little bit more complicated as uh, uh, places. Um, <clears throat> we um, are doing it systematically in all the other countries where uh, we are, uh, especially the ones where our difficulties. We try to support also um, international organizations who are Brussels based or not in other cities. I refer, for instance, that we support the Budapest Pride, that we give money to that and, and, and together with, with others, of course. So I think it's, it's important that we take that as an official position as being the capital of Europe. And we noticed when we were in these um, other countries and other cities, that the fact that Brussels does something is just more than be the capital of Belgium, you know, for, for many people over there, it's it's recognized as the capital of Europe. So, so symbolically, I think it's very um, important. And so we will do the same um, and we will support um, Belgian associations, but also the region will be present at the Belgrade uh, Europe Pride. Um, since long, we have a bilateral visit to the city of Belgrade uh, plan because we have a, an agreement and uh, the city of Belgrade wants to uh, elaborate on it and wants to get closer relations with us on, on several teams, uh, mobility, public spaces and things like that. So we are going to, to do that in uh, September, but of course we are going uh, to be present at uh, the Europe Pride officially uh, as Brussels capital region, as the capital of Europe, uh, with a stand with our uh, Belgian uh, associations uh, together, because I think it's important to do uh, all this uh, together. So that's basically what I wanted to say, that for us, um, we want to remain Brussels as a, a very open, open-minded city. And even in Brussels, once in a while, there are issues. And I think it, it shows us all that uh, it is never uh, granted forever. And it's always a kind of, 
of a fight and always a kind of evolution, but it's for everything. It's for women rights. Uh, look to the United States with all the uh, abortion issue. It's it's the same. It's uh, we in Europe. Sometimes we tend to believe that everything what we have uh, today is forever, um, but that's not the case. Uh, democracy is not forever. Um, human rights are not forever. So it's a it's I would not say a struggle, but it's it's a fight sometimes, and it's a and it's um it's a kind of uh, attention that we need an awareness. That's the word I'm looking for. An awareness that we all have to be aware. That, that, that there is um, uh, always an issue. And so Brussels, I think by nature, if I can say it like that, uh, since the 19th century, we were welcoming all these free open mind thing. Uh, Karl Marx was here, Victor Hugo was here. We have a big tradition. And so we have to keep this tradition. And I'm pretty sure that on the gay rights, LGBTQE rights, um, I think um, I have to do say everything now for Brussels. No. <laughs> 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 just joking huh? uh, so I won't repeat everything what I said um, it's um, well I take it so <laughs> no, I'm just okay to sum, to sum it up so we take the gear arts in all our international actions we will be present at the Belgrade uh, Europe Pride, and we are very happy uh, that um, Alma <laughs> It's getting Monty Python. <laughs> that, Alma, that Alma is uh, is based in uh, in Brussels. So and thank you, you. You speak about situation and uh, what's uh, going to be better, but maybe not better. We have just a film to present what's happened at the moment and history of Belgrade uh, Pride. Okay, start the film, please. Thank you. And now, uh, Edwin, uh, members of ILMA will explain what is this new association based in Brussels uh, and supporting uh, with the Brussels uh, region. And Edwin will make a link with Marco. And Marco is in Serbia at the moment and is uh, responsible for the Pride. Uh, hello, Marco. And now it's over to you, Edwin. Hello, everybody. I have my mic on. Yeah. yeah, okay. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining in today. Uh, thank you, all of you, for asking me, and thank you so much, Paul Smith, for being here. It means a lot to us all. Um, I, on this table, I represent ELMA, and ELMA is the newly erected European LGBT Media Association, LGBTQ Media Association, based right here in the Press Club in Brussels. Um, all associate members of them uh, are members of the media. Um, uh, from Germany to Greece and from Hungary to the Czech Republic, we work together to share content and to set the agenda. 
Uh, one of the most current and significant topics for today is the Europride in Belgrade in uh, Serbia. Um, maybe not the first country you would expect a Europride, but a country that definitely needs one. Um, today we are honored to speak to Marko uh, Mihailov. Ah, I knew this would go wrong. <laughs> Mihailovic, is that right, Marko Mihailovic? Sorry. Yes, Marko Mihailovic, and he is key in organizing Europride uh, of, in September, from September 12 to September 18. Hi, Marko. Um, I had to keep this introduction brief because we only have uh, a short moment of time. Um, and I have a few questions lined up for you. Um, are you ready? Very ready. Okay, good. Um, Europride um, will have the world focus in Serbia this autumn. Um, how would you describe the human rights situation? the human rights situation of LGBTQ people in Serbia right now? Uh, Edwin, thanks for the question. But before I answer, I really must thank all of you, especially Mr. Pascal Smith, the city of Brussels and Elma. It's a huge opportunity for us to speak in front of all of you, and uh, we hope that the press will pick this up. Uh, Europride in Belgrade is an incredibly important event, not only for the LGBTI plus community, but for the human rights movement. As you've had the opportunity to see in the video, Belgrade Pride started very violently in 2001 with the first Pride, and 21 years later, uh, stuff have improved, but not significantly. I would say that the human rights situation in Serbia is uh, not satisfactory to the level that the respect of human rights is something that's a controversial topic in the society. Uh, there's been so much media slander and there's been so much uh, people in power who haven't respected and nor have acknowledged the importance of human rights. So the advancements we have made in the last 20 years, I would say, uh, aren't as significant as they should have been. Uh, I feel that our, uh, actually our idea with the Europride is to get solidarity from all over Europe and to have people understand that in the Western Balkans, we're still fighting a very basic fight, a fight for the visibility of the community, a fight for the respect of human rights and fight for the legal acknowledgement of our lives. So when it comes to the human rights, I would say that we are uh, not where we should have been, but we are fighting hard. And there is a big community of people who believe in the future of democracy, freedom, and liberty for Serbia and the Western Balkans region. Um, well, that's that's a bit disappointing, Marco, uh, to hear that, uh, that, that there's so much work uh, to be done, but then it's a good thing we talk to you now, and it's a very good thing uh, that you do, uh, that you are key in organizing uh, and that you are organizing Europride in Serbia this year. Uh, um, I take my hat off for you. Um, you say there's a lot of work to be done, and 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 you also say that uh, um, you don't get the support that you need. What what kind of support did you get from the government, and what kind of support do you still need? Uh, to be very honest, it's a very challenging question for me to answer because anytime I get asked this question, I try to remain as diplomatic as possible and I hope uh, that I, I don't know how, mu how much uh, the people in Brussels and in the rest of Europe are familiar with the specifics of the Balkan political arena, but for example, our last prime minister was an out lesbian woman. Uh, she has a partner with her partner. She has a child. But when it comes to the lives of the LGBTI plus community, we are not able to legally register our partnerships. We are not able, uh, and we're not even close to talking about our families, about the children in same-sex relationships. So I feel there's a big discrepancy when it comes to uh, what the privileged elites have as an option and what regular people have. Uh, the government has given us support verbally many, many times. And a couple of government officials have been coming to the pride. But when it, when it comes to legislative improvements, uh, I feel we are stagnating and we are not improving. For example, there was a action plan that expired in 2019 that lasted from 2016 until 2019, where the government has um, uh, planned that they will regulate same-sex unions or partnerships and not a single step was made forward. And last year, we have finally started the process of adapting the law and adopting the law, but that, that process hasn't finalized yet. And all we've been hearing are promises. 
Uh, we truly hope that the support that we are getting will stop being promises and stop being uh, talks. It will lead up to concrete actions. We need law on same-sex unions. We need law on gender recognition. We need a multitude of of legislative improvements, but no, most of all, we need our lives recognized. We need hate crimes and hate speech to be understood by the institutions. For example, in our penal code, we've had the uh, hate crime as, uh, as a category from 2012. Uh, in those 10 years, there's been only four verdicts that have used the uh, hate crime as uh, a that have used hate crime when it comes to attacks on the LGBTI plus community. It is in no way uh, indicative of the situation that we're facing. And I have to say that uh, there's a big uh, disbelief and a lack of trust when it comes to the public institutions. So there's a very low number of people that are willing to report uh, discrimination and violence. And even when they do report it, there's a huge uh, there's a possibility that uh, they will get out of publicly. There's a possibility of secondary victimization. And there's a lack of uh, training and understanding from the people who should be aware of uh, how to treat victims of abuse and hate crimes. And so to shorten my answer, I would say that the government support is so far only declarative. They, it's more verbal than practical. And we really hope that they will recognize the importance of your pride in Belgrade, not only for the advancement of the position of the LGBTI plus community, but also uh, of spreading a positive image of Belgrade. Belgrade has improved significantly when it comes to uh, the position of the LGBTI plus community. But I would have to say that that improvement is focused only on Belgrade. The rest of Serbia is facing the same amounts of homophobia as they did 10 or 20 years ago. And that's something that we must work on. And also the idea of our Euro Pride wasn't only to uh, get support for Serbia, but also for all of the others non-EU Western Balkan countries, which are facing the same issues. Okay, so th that's uh, is rather grim. Uh, um, how will Euro Pride change any of this? Uh, what, what's the... Uh, what will your pride do to change this, except from what you already said earlier uh, in your answer, except from uh, um, bringing it out into the open? Is there, is there any chance of politicians making any promises or making any, uh, any effort for uh, moving forward? It's a very specific situation that we're in right now. We've just had elections and we still don't have a government. So uh, it looks like the government won't be formed until August or September. So we're in a very uh, an undesirable situation, but we hope that the city government will fo form sooner. And we really hope that they will start supporting this event more. I have to say that uh, although it may seem too grim, but I, I, for us, it's a reality. But in that reality, we have made some improvements. In the last uh, six years and seven years, we've been working together with the Ministry of Interior Affairs, with the city government on uh, making the pride happen. And they are supportive in some technical ways, but we feel that there's uh, room for much more. Um, what was the question again? Sorry. Um, I think you've answered the question about, uh, the, the question was, how would you, will Europe Pride oh, change, change out of well, this? Europe Pride, uh, Europe Pride well, Europe Pride will be significant for a multitude of reasons. Number one is the visibility of our issues. We feel that the rest of Europe has sort of, I wouldn't say forgotten us, but when you fought the fight that we're fighting now, the Western European countries and Northern European countries have fought that fight 30, 40 years ago. We still need, we hope that we will get solidarity from all over Europe to make sure that uh, liberties and freedoms aren't only yes. for the richer countries of Europe, but for all European countries. So, and that, that's so true. One, my, my last question for you, because I'm, 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 I'm cut off uh, for time reasons. Um, there, there's some hope uh, on the horizon, some sun on the horizon, because of course, as we all know, Serbia and the European Union are talking about becoming uh, uh, getting full membership for Serbia as part, being part of the, uh, the European Union. They have been talking for quite a while. Uh, after listening to you, I don't think this is really uh, going to happen soon uh, because LGBTQ rights are uh, very important for the EU. How do you feel about this? Do you have any thoughts about Serbia becoming a part of the, of becoming a full member for the EU? Well, there's a lot of uh, 
room for improvements and to become a part of a member state of the European Union, you need to improve your own uh, system and get in tune with the European uh, system. And I hope that we will get there soon. I really hope that the new government will have uh, the EU accession as a priority, but also respect of human rights as a priority. To become a member country of the EU without fixing your own issues, as, as you've said, nearly impossible. And I really hope that this situation will advance as soon as possible. I also hope that in the coming months, months we will have good news for you, that uh, we will have more stronger messages of support from government officials and that we will, that your pride in Belgrade will be a success story. I'm sure that it will be a success story no matter what happens, but I really hope that we will utilize this opportunity to the maximum of, uh, of its possibility. Thank you for all your efforts. Thank, Thank you, you, Marco. Stay online, Marco, please. Uh, is there any question because we will uh, do the end at the moment and you have 10 minutes for private question but if maybe i want to say something when we yeah. when we go to belgrade in september of course to participate in the euro pride we will also meet with normally uh, well of course we will meet with on, on the city region level but normally we meet also with national uh, ministers i hope you have a government uh, at the time and we will um, of course convene the message but also propose uh, a kind of support collaboration with all the the things that we have done in um, in I have to repeat as you see all the things you have done in uh, in brussels but we have done in brussels and somehow export the expertise between brackets uh, that we have so I think that's one of the points that we uh, are going to uh, to work on with the exchange, uh, not only with the city government, but also with the uh, national uh, Serb uh, government that we will meet in uh, in September. Excellent. So that's already in the pocket for you, Marco. And uh, I know I know myself from my personal experience that uh, any any help from Brussels will uh, mean a lot. At, uh, help uh, towards the national government will help a lot for everything you're doing so good luck with that thank you so much thank you marco is there any question stay online uh, marco stay online please it's not in a hurry <laughs> garrett i was just wondering i was just wondering if there was any information about the human rights conference planned during euro pride well, our Europe Pride starts on the 12th of September on a Monday and ends on Sunday the 16th, actually the 18th. And throughout the week, we will have hundreds of events of various cultural events, debates, lectures. But one of the key events is going to be the Human Rights Conference that's going to take place from uh, Tuesday the 13th until the Friday the 16th of September. In the conference, there will be uh, many very important European representatives of various governments, but also activists from all over the world. Uh, the whole program for the Pride will be published in June. So uh, I would just like to refer you to the website, uh, europride2022.com, and also our social media where you can find all the information. The program is being finalized, so I expect that in the first half of June, we will have everything and we will keep you updated. But follow us on social media for more updates and check the website. There. Okay. Thank you, Marco. Stay online because after uh, we will uh, cut off the direct live. Uh, and thank you to Press Club Europe. Uh, thank you to Leo. Thank you for the coffee this morning, <laughs> Paul, <laughs> Laurent, and his team. Uh, very uh, great. Uh, thank you for this morning. Stay online, Marco, because if uh, a journalist will ask you a question, it will be private now. Okay. Uh, see you. Bye.